Right guys, uh, on to week three, or episode three of Antipoth Tips. Um, I'll try and keep the videos as short as I can, like I said before. Uh, I do waffle on a little bit, but um, yeah, I'll try and keep them short. But but this week, uh, I'm going to try and put up, uh, I'm going to put up four tips uh, for the Charlton Festival. I'm going to do two for this week and obviously two for next week's video because probably won't have time to put one up next week uh given it's christmas week um so i'll put four up for this video and then uh my next video will probably be in the new year um uh, and given that hopefully we'll have a, a busy christmas period uh so some good racing coming up um after a little bit of a break so hopefully um if i can get these up now some of them will run over Christmas and hopefully win and shorten in price. Uh, so yeah, straight on to the first one. Um, this horse did run this week. I think it ran yesterday, actually. Um, it's in the National Hunt Chase and it's uh, Ramilly's uh, for William Williams. Um, it was... I don't, I don't know what the, the depth of that uh, beginner's chase was, um, but... I think given that he's sent him over three miles straight away uh, in, a, in a beginner's chase, uh, I think that qualifies him for the National Hunt chase already. I think they have to run over three miles or more anyway. Um, so he's qualified for that. Um, and I think, I know this is the same connections as Galard de Menil, but I think, I think he has a good chance. To be honest, I think he's a stayer. I think he, I really do think he'll he'll like the, the step up in trip to this uh, to three mile six. Um, and yeah, I think he's got a good chance to be honest. And I, I will. I know William Mullins has said before he does like this horse. Um, he had decent form, I guess, in bumpers and over hurdles. I think he finished six in the Albert Battle last year. So I mean nothing to write write home about over hurdles, but I think chasing could be the making of him. Yeah, he did win a point point to point at the start of his career, so um yeah, I think I think fences could bring out the, the best in him. Uh, and he jumped pretty well to be honest on the whole. Um like I said, not sure how good that form is in behind. Um and and he did only win by a couple of lengths, but it's the way he did it. He did stay on quite well towards the end, um, and and pulled away from from the uh, the horse in behind. I think that was was it Tenzing. Um, so I think, yeah, he's got. I think he he looks like he has a good chance now. Yeah, like I said, Galad de Menil is his favourite for the for the same connections, but I I couldn't see why they they wouldn't send Ramillies here. I I can't see them keeping him at three miles i don't think he'd win a brown advisory and he definitely won't step back in trip for for the turners or definitely not the arkle uh, and i mean looking through the market obviously chemical energy that's going straight there so he, he's um got the same kind of profile as galvin i think for, for gordon elliott he's going to send him straight there after a run uh Bally griffin cottage uh, is next and I think he's could be quite ground dependent. I think he'll want it soft. And I think Dan Skelton has said that they actually could be targeting the the Brown advisor. He, he was impressive at Adok on his uh, chasing debut. Three strike life. I don't think will go here. Uh, Manella Kruner could go here. Jerry Colom. I think again ground dependent. And then you come to Ramillies. And then some of the horses in behind. I mean, his classical getaway. I think that. I think th obviously fences have made him a better horse. I, I think he could be one for the Brown advisor possibly. Um. So yeah. So Ramilly's at at sixteens. I think best price is twenty, but I think he's sixteens with at least seven or eight bookmakers there. So. So yeah. So. Uh, I think the first tip I'm going to put up is Ramilly's for the National Hunt Chase at. 16 to 1 um and then so on to my second tip uh if i can just get it up it is going to be blue lord for the ryanair 
Now, th this Ryanair market is a bit. It's all it's all on Allo really, um, and and given what um, Trevor Park stood uh, have come out and said, and and Willie Mullins himself uh, have said, I, I wouldn't be as confident on him turning up as I was a few weeks ago. Uh, some of the comments have made recently is that he could just go straight to the festival fresh off off not having a run and yes yeah, he has won fresh before he's, he's won first time and he, he's won this like two years in a row now he, and he were impressive doing so twice but going straight to the festival after not having a run against horses that will be fit and ready for this I, I wouldn't I mean he has drifted on the market I think he's out to seven to four now although I'm looking at uh, biggest price two to one. I I, I don't think the market's confident that he's even going to make it, uh, and given the comments that have come out, I I I wouldn't be a hundred percent sure that Aloha goes. I don't I don't know if they know. I don't know if they they think he was going to recover quicker than he has, and he hasn't. Uh, I'm not sure, but some of the horses in behind Galloping the Champ won yesterday in the John Durkin impressive. He's obviously going to be targeted at the Gold Cup. We've said that already, and he was very good yesterday. Um, I mean, I put a Plutard up last week. I still back that that tip. Um, and and galloping the Champs was good. He was he was very good, impressive, and then it was good to see him be dropped in behind and not sent off in front. So he's versatile. Um, so I I wouldn't lie and say I wasn't worried, but. I'm happy with ten to one on a Plutard. Um. So and then, Shishkin. God knows what's going to happen with him. I could see him stepping up to three. I could, I could see him missing Cheltenham, stepping up to three miles and probably going, could possibly going to Aintree maybe. I'm I'm not sure, but I can't. I don't know if it if Shishkin is now a bit of a broken horse, unfortunately. Um. That Ascot run seems to have definitely taken everything out of him, whereas it has seemed to made a made a man of him an argument, I think. I think it's um, progressed him on and Shishkin unfortunately is has took a step back. Um Braceman game, I think they'll miss Cheltenham again. I can't see them going here. If he were to win the King George over Christmas, the they they could send him to the Gold Cup. I c I, I couldn't I don't know if he'd stay the the three mile two. I'd I'd like to see Brazeman game win off the bridle. I'd like to see him dig in and win a race, but it, you you never know what you're gonna get. And, and King George winners don't really have a good record in the Gold Cup anyway. Um, Fakadudari galloping the champs made him look like a very ordinary horse, and he actually made him look like a slow horse. <laughs> Surprise, well, not unsurprisingly, because Galloping the Champs is a very quick horse. But Fakir Dudariz, I mean, if Aloha wasn't to turn up, he, he he probably would turn up. I think they've been avoiding Aloha, and he has run well before behind him, so he has been playing second fiddle for the last two seasons. But if Aloha wasn't to turn up, I think he would turn up. Uh, Fakir Fak Dudariz, that is, would turn up. Um, Envoy Allen again in the King George if he were to win that they'll probably go Gold Cup I think Henry de Bromhead has said Gold Cup if he wins uh, if he loses his price is, w would drift out but I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be so sure that he'd, he'd go here and I think he does want three miles Envoy Allen but would he be I don't, I don't know if he's a grade one horse at, at three miles or two and a half miles really I know he won that that race down at Down Royal, but I mean, he beat Galvin. Galvin obviously won won himself that day. Ken Boy, he's getting on a bit now. I think he's second favorite for the cross country. Um, so, so yes, I won't I wouldn't take that form with, you know, take it with a pinch of salt. And then you come down to Blue Lord at, at sixteen to one. So, 
think Blue Lord's a big price, given that, like I said, except from Alaho, we definitely will go here if he if he's fit. But we're not sure if if if, if he's going to be fit in time or if he's fit, he, he could go straight there. I won't be so confident on him if he went straight straight to Cheltenham. Um, but yeah, the six horses in behind, I don't think are even going to go here, and and then you've got Blue Lord. There's a couple of horses behind Blue Lord, Shaq and Passoir. They have said he's going to step up and trip, but again, I'm not. I think they could send him to the champion chase, and he'll just play second string to an Ergumin again. I know he's a good horse, but he's he's getting on a bit. He doesn't really bring his best form to England. He he saves his best form. Um, for the end of season at at Punchestown, I think it is, is it? Um, and then you've got like Majorogo. He, he hasn't run for a long time now after being injured. They have said he could be back after the new year, but again, you, you don't know what he's going to be like after an injury. Capadano, you haven't seen. And and then you're coming down to, uh, I know you mean going to go here. Conflated, did he fall in this last year when he, he probably would have finished second, but again, he wants three miles. So Blue Lord looks, he, he looks at a good, a, a good price. He looks a tempting price at 16 to one. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him in at sixteen to one because I think that's a a really good price for him given that a lot of the horses in that market, Bar Alaho and maybe Faku do do aren't gonna go there. They're just not not gonna go there. And we know Bulldog now. We know he stays at the, the further trip over two mile four on heavy ground as well, um, and and yeah, I think. 16 to 1 looks a massive price um so so yeah he's a i think he's a younger horse than aloho aloho is now will be turning nine and i know that's not older but he's getting on he's getting on if you know what i mean he's his, his third year going back to the ryan and look if he were to come now after christmas now and have a prep run He's going to be evens or even shorter. And then that Blue Lord price doesn't look as good. But I guess that's what anti-post tipping is. You've got to kind of take a a bit of a shot in the dark and hope. Not hope that he doesn't go, but f f for us, I'd, I'd like, or for me, if to put Blue Lord up now at 16-1 to 1, and then no, Aloho doesn't go. And he probably, Blue Lord would then become... Probably number one for that race for for Mullins and and Paul Paul Townend would probably take the ride. I think that'd be be, be massive and sixteen to one. Then it, it it could be as short as well five to one lower three to one. Um. So yeah. So Blue Lord is the next tip for the Ryanair. Um. At sixteen to one. Um. So yeah. So like I said, I've put up. I'll I'll do four tips for this video, um, because next week, um, I'm gonna be busy, so I don't think I'll have time to, to um, to put up a video. So I'll get them all in now, and hopefully, I know some of these will be running over Christmas, so hopefully we can get some decent prices now before they run. Um, so next horse is, uh, in the stairs hurdle, and it's Florin Porter, now. Yes, a bit boring favourite, but nine to two in a couple of places. He's four to one pretty much across the board. Nine to two in two places. Five to one with ball sport. That just looks a massive price to me, and and some of you might not think that's a a big price, but given that what he's done the last two years, he, he still looks. His reappearance was. What we expected, he did. He did it last year. Um, the race he ran in this is it the Liz Liz, Liz Mullen hurdle, uh, but obviously Bob Ollinger ran in it, and uh, won by home by the Lee. Obviously, home by the Lee. He's a look. He finished sixth in the stairs hurdle last year. He isn't a bad horse, <clears throat> um, and we we know Florin Porter needs the run. He, he's always needed the run. Um, and I think he's going to be going to is it the Christmas hurdle, Leopardstown Christmas hurdle or something, which he came second in last year. 
obviously last year were a, an absolute joke. It, it, it'd have been, I think he'd have won it last year. I got a lot closer to classical dream. <clears throat> if they, um, if they'd have restarted that race, um, obviously classical dream stole six lengths at the start and he only won by, well, he won by four or five lengths in the end. You know, it, it says it all there, I think. Um, but again, this is, it's another race where there's not a lot of depth at all that the market, you, you're looking through some of the ones in behind blazing Carl, uh, was a good novice last year. I mean, he beat Giolino Bello, who came out and franked that form. Um, and we know he goes well at Cheltenham. He's won twice there already in, in only three starts. And look, it was a, he looked a good novice, but we hadn't seen him for a year. You know, what What can we expect now stepping into open company? He could be the young pretender to come through, but I mean... I'd I'd like Blazing Carl to to come through and and hopefully give Florian Porter a race, but I just I don't, I just think Florian Porter from the front, Dan, uh, Danny Mullins. I mean, we said it last year. We didn't think he were going to get an easy lead again, and what did he go and do? He went and stacked them all up and kicked on the bend, and, and blew them apart again. And I mean, I was just looking on the exchanges today. Classical Dream has actually drifted out. A little bit, so I'm not sure if I've I've tried to have a look and see if um if anything's been said, but I've I've had a look through the quotes for Christmas and and what's running, and he hasn't been mentioned, so I don't know if that if that's a reason why he's been he's drifted out a, a little bit, but he's drifted out to eight to one in a couple of markets. Uh, he's nine to one with bet three six five. Uh, that's after being five to one earlier this week, so I'm not sure if he's something's been said, um, or I can't see him having a different target to the the stayers. But um, so yeah, so I just have to keep an eye on that. Tiupu again, ground dependent. I think once soft ground buzz at fourteen to one. I think so. Well, I think that's ridiculous given that yes, he was a good horse, but to have the injury he's had. Hasn't run since. I don't even think Nicky Henderson thinks he's going to run. I don't even know if he'd run this season, to be honest, Buzz. I think they they could save him again till and, and maybe go next season. Um. So so I can't see Buzz running. Bob Ollinger. That that reappearance was good. I think. Um. Look, he looked more comfortable over hurdles, didn't he? But. I'd still have question marks on whether he would he does he stay three miles to any he, I know that Ballymore one has come out and been a, a good race, I think. Uh but and he, he looked a quick horse that day. And and since he's I, I think he's a quicker horse than what they think he is, but look, they know him better than obviously I do. Um but but yeah, I, I wouldn't be so sure Bob Ollinger stays three miles. But look, I, I'm not sure if he's out over Christmas. He, he could be in the same race as Florian Porter. But um, yeah, it'd be nice to see them both again. And, and I think Florian Porter would reverse that form, especially going up in trip again now, back to three miles. I think it, that's where he's best, obviously. And yeah, he, he performed in this this race last year. Obviously, I know he came second, but that that start were a farce. Um I mean the the state man he's obviously going champion hurdle, appreciate it. He's going Arkle. Well, chasing. I I think he might go to the Arkle. I think Willie Mullins has said Arkle. So Gerard he's going chasing. Marie Rock's an interesting one. Nick Henderson did say we're gonna step him step her up, sorry, to three miles. But then I have read again since and I don't think she's been seen this season or I've just missed it. Um I think I think they did say he could go back to the mayor's hurdle with her, um, and I think nine to one for the mayor's hurdle looks a good price for her. So that's one to keep an eye on, maybe. Um, I mean, oh, geez, there's Alaho in this market. That's not going to happen, obviously. So I think I think for in part, I mean, he's he's the one to beat. He's the one to catch. Um, what's happening over Christmas? Uh, long walk at Kempton, Champ and Paisley Park. I know the. It's good to see him have a, a good battle, but if they're the best of what the British have got to offer, th there's nothing coming out of Britain that's going to beat him. 
it's what's going to come out of Ireland. And to be honest, a classical dream we know runs well fresh, but then after that seems to peter out. Blazing Carl, unknown. We, we don't know how good he's going to be. But to be off for a long time, to come back, look, he, he could... Um, it could be one to watch, but again, you, you, we're, we're not sure. I did think I think I read something from Charles Burns saying that um, they're in a race against time to get him to the stairs. So again, I mean, you could take that with a pinch of salt. But I think I, I think Flory Porter is the one to be, and four to one or even four to one. I think it's a massive price. I think he should be short on that. Um. So yes, yeah, so the third horse is is Flory Porter. Um. So, right, I'll try and wrap this up as quick as I can. But last one uh, is in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. Now, um, I'd have to get the phone. Uh, the horse I'm going to put up is uh, Magical Zoe for Henry de Bromhead. Now, that market looks... It, it looks like it could be a good race, to be honest. You're looking through the market, Lucia, good horse for Nicky Henderson, Astro Diamond, a horse with no name again for Nicky Henderson, Liberty Dance, deep, deeply superficial. Uh, Between Waters, we haven't seen yet. Um, Queen's Gamble, I think it's going to go for the... Uh, what's it called? Bumper. So, I mean, there's some good horses in there. Um, but that race... At Down Royal for Magical, which Ma uh, Magical Zoe won. Um, she still looked quite green. I think she needed the run. Uh, she she stays well, which is a, a good sign. Um, and I, th uh, I think I've read somewhere that she could be went straight to Cheltenham. Now, I wouldn't be so sure because I think I've only read it. Um, off Twitter, so you know it could be anything that. But I, I would like to see her at least one more time. I think just to get another run into her, just to uh, build up her experience. Um, and like I said, there's, there's some good horses in here. Lucia for Nicky Henderson was impressive. Um, I think her race was actually quicker than the one jet powered one, so it were a good sign. Um, I mean, she could go to the Supreme, but I think they'll go here. Uh, it's an easier race, obviously. And, and Nick Henderson, if he has got jet powered going there, then I can't see him sending two. Um, I mean, he has done it before, but no, I, I, I think she, I think he'll send her here. Ashra Diamond, I was impressed with that third uh, in the Royal Bond. Um, she she looks a good horse. She she won on on debut over over hurdles and it wasn't overly impressive but the way she did it you know to come through the field um and i thought she she did all right and yeah that, that were a massive step up in form i thought that third uh behind two good horses i really like Mar marine national i think he he could give fasal vega a, a good a good race in the supreme i don't think he should be um Undermined and was it Irish Point that finished second? He'll be seen over Christmas again. I think, I think he might be taking on Fasal Vega possibly in the, the the race at Christmas. So hopefully that form we'll, we'll be able to see how good it is, um, and hopefully that'll back it up. And I think Astro Diamond stepping back to her own sex could could be a, a good horse. But like I said, Magical Zoe, the form of that race that she won. Uh, I think she beat Liberty Dance. Uh, she beat a horse for Willie Mullins, Willie Mullins that won. I'm going to say it won yesterday and I can't remember her name. It's not... Oh, I'd have to get it up. I can't remember. I don't know if it's... Maybe it's Halka de Talbert, possibly. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. That's one out, come out and, and won since. A couple of the other horses have come out and won since. And really front that form. And if you if you go back and look at that down royal form, given the way she raced and how green she was and unexperienced she was, I, I think I think ten to one's a really good price, to be honest. Uh, a lot of the horses have come out and front that form now. 
Um, and look, I won't be telling you to go. I won't rush into. If you want to run again now to Cheltenham, I won't rush into the price. Um, but that form looks really strong, and I think ten to one. I think it's. Is it, is it, it's not the Bears now. Is it called Jack De Bromhead Novice Hurdle? Um, obviously, what happened were unfortunate, um, and I think Henry De Bromhead would would really like to win this race. I think it'd be a lot of sentimental value for him, obviously, um, and it'd be a great story. Now, obviously, you don't back horses for a great story, but I think he'll have this horse primed for a race like this, ready to go. He definitely wants to win it. I think he's already said this is the race for her. Um, and I think 10 to 1, I think she could be a little bit of a forgotten horse, given that she hadn't been seen, seen since that race. But we know, or hopefully she'll come on for that run. And if she, we, yeah, given what's happening behind, it, it looks really good form. And if she progresses like the rest of them have progressed, 10 to 1 looks a really big price and, and she could be, a lot shorter so so yeah so yeah that the, the last horse i'm going to put up is uh magical zoe a 10 to 1 uh through the for the mayor's or jack the promed novice hurdle um so so yeah um yeah that's all four tips um hopefully you enjoyed it uh it's good to have some racing back some obviously punches down yesterday john durkin that were good um Hopefully Christmas period, obviously a busy period, so hopefully um some good racing to come. Um and, and yeah, hopefully we'll have some more clues and we'll see and see what's gonna come out of Ireland, that uh, good good Christmas festival over there. Um and hopefully it'll give us some more clues and um and yeah, so hopefully you can all have all all have a good Christmas. Um and hopefully we can get stuck into some good racing now finally after a few uh, a few weeks of frozen frozen ground and then waterlogged ground and, and fog and all sorts. So so yeah, so I hope you all have a good Christmas. Um uh, and, and be lucky. So yeah, Merry Christmas. See you later.